Oh, you yeah. 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 Call to order the uh, you have to do it February 29, 2016 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, recorded by KCMI. We have a lengthy agenda this evening. Uh, first up is uh, a rehearing on the special permit granted several months back on uh, 248 Mass Ave. And we have Mark Newman here this evening uh, requesting an approval to uh, make some changes to the permit that was open. So I asked Mr. Newman to come forward and. Uh, and Joseph Arthur is here with me. Great. Thank you. Do you have any text on it? Words? Okay. I don't. Okay. You can just walk us through sure. the changes to the permit. So, so essentially, what's driving this is the original proposal, which was uh, what we got the special permit for, was for a, a siding um, that we were going to try to do this niche hub siding. Uh, and uh, the reasons that we're back are for uh, changes to a traditional look driven by two uh, situations here. One is uh, really the overwhelming cost of purchasing the Nishia signing and finding the right people at a reasonable cost to install it. Uh, and the second is uh, what we'd like to do, because these are going to be condominiums, and we're going to have a condominium association, is to minimize the maintenance on the exterior, which the Nishia would, uh, uh, would meet that objective. But what we've decided to do is, in going to the traditional look, to go to the, uh, the Harvey um, Majesty windows, which uh, have the aluminum clad exterior and the wooden interior, uh, which will minimize the maintenance that we'll need for the exterior of the building. Uh, so what these, what these drawings do is they capture those things. We, we are trying to retain, we might recall, we wanted to have a, a shading where, and I'll just I'll pass these around, but I'll try to hold these up the way it, it was originally intended to be. So we had, um, it's just shades of gray, but it was a little darker at the base and a little lighter at the top. Okay, you can take a look at this. Mm -hmm. And so we want to retain that, okay, and keep our shading. Uh, it is a fiber uh, cement um, uh, uh, exterior siding which will be pre-painted and essentially maintenance-free. I kind of have to wave it around to catch the, uh, the slight differences. It wouldn't bother me if the bottom was a, a touch darker and, the, and so forth going up. But these, are, these, these samples reasonably closely fit the same ones that are on the color palettes, actually, that you might have in your, in your folder. <clears throat> While we have this in front of you, I'd just like to mention um, that it's, you know, it's actually been quite a while since the video was 10 or 11 months ago, I would think. Uh, but the, um, that's actually a full 12 months ago that we were here. There, is, there are one or two small differences to the exterior of the building from the drawings that we have in front of you. Um, one of them is that we're putting a roof deck on the back of the building. So as you look at, actually you have all four. It's a small roof deck that's actually at the back of the building, adjacent to the turret at the back of the building. Um, and we took, there were like five entrances to the, to the first four units, so we took one of the entrances out uh, on the right hand side. That's out. Um, as we were going through the whole process, we determined that, uh, or we learned, that we can't put in a second line uh, for a sprinkler line for water uh, because there's a moratorium on getting into the street. So one of the things that we are going to have to do, and, and I don't know if this is terribly relevant for this, but I'll just add it, is we're, we're, we're doing the water tanks at a pump. Uh, to provide for the sprinkler system until we can get back into the street for a separate water line, uh, which could be as many as five years out. 
Uh, and I think that's pretty much it, Joe. Any, any others? Only that, uh, I mean, that one of the things that, that drove the decision about about the sort of change um, was to take the, you know, what we've done is one of the issues is the window cost and the, and, and this contemporary look with the with the transoms, whenever you had, say, a bedroom would have six windows. And in this scheme, a bedroom has two windows. You know, so it, it made, they're big, but it made a significant difference in, in how things were sort of put together and the, the cost of things. So, so more, maybe, win more windows in the new one? No, no there's fewer windows fewer. Yeah, in, okay. in, the, in the more traditional one. Um, it's sort of a loftish look uh, with the big windows. They're high ceilings. And uh, we, we still wanted to draw attention to the fact that they were high ceilings. That's what, that's what the uh, transit did in the other one. But it was just a simple mathematics of, of the combinations. Just, uh, it, it was putting things over the edge. And so... You mean the cost? In yeah. cost, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the cost of, between the siding and the windows um, it was just something that, that wasn't sustainable for, for the marketplace. And that is the sort of feedback we got from, from the brokers. Um, I've just put the other windows in, into the building I'm doing on, on Tuzzle Street at 247 Plant. They're wonderful windows. You know, who, I, I, wait, I like who them. makes them? They're called gelled windows. So we did them there, and we did them on a little house behind my mother's house at 200 Pleasant Street. I, I really like them. The experience at 200 Pleasant Street was good. The experience at 247 has not been good. Gentlemen's have to come out. They have to do some work. But, you know, they, they get it right, you know, ultimately. But what Joe's really explaining here is when you go from three to two, you actually literally buy two windows instead of three, and the gelled windows are really, really expensive. Um, you know, just at 247 Pleasant, I spent $48,000 on windows that are going to, going to just two stories. And there's nowhere near as many windows. You know, so what kind of windows are these? These are the Harvey Majesties, okay? And so they have a, it, it's a reasonably good quality window with the clad exterior for the maintenance, but with the wood interior, they have the quality uh, on the inside of the home. And they just double hung? Double hung. Okay. And not, not divide the lights, right? They're just regular? Regular. Clipped on, um, clipped on mullions? Ooh. Oh, no, no. Uh, I don't no, think so. Those, those, are, these are, those are Harvey's, uh, the Majesty windows have an SDL. So okay. they're, I mean, they're decent. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, I got a, I got to say, I'm a little disappointed, frankly. <laughs> um, I remember this, and I remember how excited we were by it, um, because it was. Uh, I'm trying to remember what was there before, but obviously this is a lot bigger. The wind storm. Yeah. Oh, right. It was that kind of thing, that kind of brand. It was sort of like from the satellite, right? So one of the things that I took into consideration when we did that was the fact that we were getting something that was um, essentially, um, I think, going to be a, a building that you and we could be proud of. I, I guess I'm, I'm really concerned as I look at this now. I mean, this is the door that you were talking about and I had circled it myself earlier. I got, this just feels like a different project now. I mean, if I were on the right side elevation, if I was next to you on this one, I guess I just feel like I was a little bit like by a, a, a big old, it's even bigger than a usual triple decker, right? I mean, it's just, it's, that's, I don't know. I. I don't. I, I'm not expressing myself well, but I think the the very small um, uh, just gives it a real sense of how big it is. It just looks so much bigger in this than it did over there, and uh, I'm afraid that when it comes to fruition, we're going to have the exact same feeling. And I, and I guess I guess from my perspective, in, is this a hearing? Did they? Do we? Is this a reopening of the hearing? I guess I, no. it's not. See, and, and for me, this is almost a different project in my mind. And I guess I'm a little bit concerned. And, that, and how is it different again? I, just just the, the way that the windows are masked and, and the siding, it just, it, it's, I don't know how to describe it, but I think we would have had some, if I were a neighbor, I'd want to know that it's going to look like this and not this. The last time we had a hearing and you had to notify all the abutters and everything else, what they saw was this. 
okay? Now what we're being asked to approve is this. And if I were a neighbor, I'd want to know about that. And as far as I know, you know, no notices have gone out to abutters or anything else. We haven't reopened the special permit in order to do this. Um, you know, a color palette and sample of the building material and color shall be submitted for approval by the director for consistency with the plan submitted. That was the special contingency. Mm -hmm. This is this is completely different in my book. So I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm feeling a, if I were a neighbor that I wouldn't think that. Geez, why didn't I get notice of this? So I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong on that, but. I feel like we're well, it's your it's your decision. Right. If you want to do that, um, I, I what it was to me was um, they had met all the other conditions, yep. but there was this one condition, and, and since they were making a change, I thought it should come back to the. Oh, board. I think that's great. But it wasn't. Um, I, didn't, I didn't. You didn't think it rose to that level, level. of yeah. reopening the hearing. But if that's what you want to do, it's your choice. I just I feel like it's a different building. It's 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 a different siding and different windows. Different topography on the top. Uh, you know, now we've got a porch up here. I mean, that's completely new. That was space that was not identified before. Um, this door is gone. Um, it's, it's certainly on the edge, as far as I'm. And I'm not. Look, I. I if this had come before us, I'm sure it would have been fine. It's just it's different in my world. So, so anyway. Okay. Um, well, I wasn't part of the first hearing for the first part, so maybe uh, it's a vantage to you guys that I'm seeing this for the first yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is. Uh, unlike Definitely. what I'm like seeing, but I do have a few questions on what you have presented. Okay, I won't really comment on what you're not going to do. It's really not relevant. Mm -hmm. Relevant. Okay. Um, so the samples you showed, showed us today was um, cement board, clapboard, right? Yes. Using, the, um, using a, a rustic wood uh, texture. Or cedar. It's a, this happens to be a, a cedar yes, texture. Yes, it is. Yes. Hardy using? board, right? It's actually, hardy board. Yeah, this, this is, it's so. just like a hardy board. This is actually an Allura product. Similar, similar stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't really be using Harvey because it's a boy. Saying Kleenex, you know. That yeah, kind of mm -hmm. but it is—it is exactly what you're describing. Yeah. And is it a smooth finish? Is you going with the um, the, the wood texture? I kind of like this wood texture. Okay. The that's right. I'm, I'm not here to, here to talk about. Um, yeah. I just want—I just, I just want to know what. I don't, I don't. I don't want you to think I'm indifferent either. Okay. But this 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 was what we think we like to do. Okay. That's fine. Um, the trim. What kind of trim are you going to use? You can use cement trim, or are you going to use uh, PVC, or PVC. so it's going to be a, a, it's going to be a, a PVC trim. Mm -hmm. And um, same with all the cornices and all that stuff up there. It's all PVC. Yes. Okay. Um, what kind of mechanical system do you have? And there's no. Is there mechanicals on the roof, or is it all down in the basement? You know, we think there'll be some on the roof, some in the basement, and perhaps one or two outside. So what kind of, is there any fencing or shielding around that, or is it just going to be laid out there? I'm just, you know, I'm just asking about... Yeah, we probably haven't actually decided how to shield it, whether it will be with a, a shrub or perhaps with a small fence. I'd also like to put in a pad for a generator, perhaps, that might also have a shield. Which would be over behind where the parking area is. Was that approved before? Yeah, or? that wasn't approved. Was no, it? no, we haven't. Dis we haven't. We haven't even decided to mm -hmm. do it yet. I'd like to do it for the condo association, and they would have to come and get the approval to actually install it. Okay, and then you said I'd like to bring the gas line to it so that they can have that. You have an option, you said. Mm -hmm. And an then are there any condensers on the roof or anything like that? On there were initially in the special permit, the original special permit, there were three pads for uh, condensers okay. near the, uh, on the roof. In Toward the center, I remember. They were, they were just this side, just in front of the, the, the stairwell. The stairwell is sort of back in the, in the sort of last two-thirds of the building on the left-hand side, and then this was just in front of it. If we convinced ourselves that they were out of sight, we had somehow were able to view them. Yeah, yeah, but well, yeah. I think we had a sense of where they yeah. were. Yeah, they were further back. Yeah. 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 
what I'm trying to lead to is now that you introduce introduce the stack up here, you're going to not want to put those next to the deck, right? So, you, no, so now you push potentially next to the turret. In other words, as called for right here. Okay. And and the deck that's what you see there is, is what you is see there is just a walkway. Do you have a somewhere? Didn't bring it. It's, it's a 16 by 16 foot deck that's just at the back in the middle of the, uh, of the back. Yeah, I see the yeah, see back here, but when you do that, <coughs> you'll probably want to put mechanics somewhere over here somewhere, right? so it's not next to the deck. You know? No, 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 they're going to be right here. Essentially right here. Right oh, next to the deck. On the other side of the, on the, other side of the staircase, the deck is on the back side. Yeah, so. Um, maybe a little lost there, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you have. The turret doesn't go across the whole roof, right? No, so no, no. No, but you see the way that the deck. Yeah, the way the way the deck works is that you walk out the door to the deck this way, and on this side of the deck would be the. So the deck is on this side of the turret. This is just a walkway. Like this, stairs here, deck is here. And then there's a little bit of a Sorry, I didn't bring this down. Yeah, it's fine. That's, that's just understanding where that is. Because mm -hmm. when I see this, it looks like it's, you know, the deck is the whole back. Yeah, I want you to yeah. see this part, this part here, the rail. Mm -hmm. It's just this part right here. So there's some sort of, it should be a little darker here or something like that. So you should that walk right in the deck beyond. Right. The deck, the deck, really the deck is beyond it at the back side of it. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not, it's not covering right. a lot of this roof. And that would leave the whole side of the turret. And it wouldn't be, these wouldn't be visible from the street. It would probably be visible from some of the other roof of the, that's across the street. No, I'm, 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 what I'm trying to, long way about it is, uh, you can put up some sort of screening up there because once the uh, people live down here, say, "Oh well, I have I spent all this money. I got this nice deck up here. I don't, re I don't want to be looking into uh, mechanical uh, equipment up there. I want to put a screen up there." Now, we get, now you're introducing another structure up there. That's just what I'm trying to say. Is it I don't think that's necessary. We weren't anticipating no. any screening of anything up on the top. We've been advised that we could consider putting the condenser down below particularly for unit one, in which case we probably would put something around it, be in the back of the house, but we put something around it. What kind of units are these? Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure I could really quote it out if we'd actually, I mean, we, we're, we're probably going to do, um, we think we're probably going to do a ductless system inside the house. Okay. So, you know, probably Mitsubishi. You know. So split on heat pumps? Yeah. Okay. And by introducing that on the ground, it doesn't that create a lot of noise for all the, all the neighbors then? Or you, you have those pretty quiet? I think they're pretty quiet, but I can't say because I've actually done them. This will be the first. I have a heat pump at my house, okay? Um, but it's a Daikin. It's not the Mississippi. I think pretty similar. Daikin and Mississippi is pretty similar. Yeah. Actually, Daikin started the U.S. Yeah. Mississippi yeah. is the brand name there. A couple of them. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, and then this, this is the piece that you missed last time, okay? On the, the first question you asked, these are the streetscapes. Okay, so this is the ranch that's there now, and this would be the three-level building that would replace it consistent with the streetscape. Okay. What street is that? Mass and Oh, okay. So this, I know, okay. It's I know. that little it's ranch. Capital I, Square. I know where exactly this is now. Okay, fine. I, I couldn't yeah. pick, pick where it first, but not know exactly where it is now. Okay. Yeah. And so this one's a big stucco right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one is a clapboard here. Mm -hmm. And directly across the street is a very large three family, what are called two family uh, <coughs> shingles. Three story. Yes, three story. So it's, it's sort of like a similar height. So the across the street is the corner of Everett in Massey. And this building is directly across the street from Everett. And I'm assuming this is the front? 
Yes. No. Nope. Doesn't it say fund? Does it say fund? This is real. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. So I think Mike's point is actually well taken in that, you know, what what this building is, similar to the, the building next to it and then to the three buildings that, that comprise Capitol Square. You know, it's a longer building. It's the, the ranch is just as long as this building right now. Okay, it's the same length because it's a small lot. Um, the massing on the building really hasn't changed. It's the siding and the windows. I think if we took a real careful look at the windows across each one of these facades, that you'll find that the window space is reasonably well duplicated. I'm a, I'm a little bit out on a limb because it's been a while since I looked at it, but that was one thing that we looked at when we made this change, was to cause the size of the windows to be approximately the same. I, I don't have any major issues with the massing. I think it fits fairly well on the street as far as contextually with the other buildings. Now that I know now I'm, I'm mm -hmm. more where it is, uh, I think Mike's point is, 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 is a good point that um, you know, it was more of a you know, contemporary uh, building uh, with uh, the more contemporary designs. Um, uh, when I look at this, this looks more traditional, but that's not, uh, not really going to... Well, it's going from, I'm it's not trying to encourage it. from modern to traditional, there's no question. I do have a couple other things. If you do this more traditional design, um, where these uh, windows are and the stairwells there, um, where you put the windows that cut through the, uh, the corners of the building, um, is there any other way of introducing light besides, uh, or in a different way, where you not have this... Uh, this issue right here. And also something, when I look at this, um, this looks like a, a kind of a, a weak front as far as entry. Is there any way maybe expanding the entry a little more? Uh, to embellish the entry a little bit more? Maybe a little canopy or a little a couple of steps for decks? Or, or well, a that, I mean, that's, that's it's a couple steps up because that, uh, we've still got to keep our uh, access there. And that's what the, there's a the slope walkway that comes up from the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. That's here from the side. Yeah. side yeah. There was some talk, if I remember correctly from the, the previous discussion on this, that there was actually going to be some landscaping around in between. the access ramp. Yep. In between the access ramp and the yeah. sidewalk. Yep. Mm -hmm. Has that changed? No. At all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up too. <coughs> Not, that, the configuration of, of the landscaping and the rest of it hasn't changed at all. There was some kind of distinctive thing, birch trees or something. Yeah. I tried to. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. But I it was a submittal. I mean, you, yeah, there was a, I'm just trying to think. This it's a number of months ago, but um, <coughs> we, got, we got an email that there were a couple of trees, and what we did do is we sent the page back in that had the uh, the landscaping on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we've said is we're going to try one of the two trees that was suggested because the issue there is that it's going to be a narrow area. You know, you really can't have trees that are going to go too broad, but there was a desire to have them go up and be a little wispy so we can have some profile in front of the, in front of the building, as, as I recall the discussion. And two suggestions came in that, you know, I think they'd, they'd be fine. You know, so we need one of the, of the two depending on what's available. So what did the original plans have for the condensers and everything? I mean, it, to be honest with you, once again, I think that, you know, part of the application on the environmental design is things like outside noise and, you know, condensers and all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. When you last came, we talked about, you know, things up here, things right. in the basement. Now we're talking about things outside next to the, next to the building and that type of thing. I, once again, I have to kind of say, that's surprising because it wasn't part of the original uh, plans, and you know it's it's that's usually something we spend quite a bit of time on, uh, especially with neighbors, etc. I've just looked through it, and I believe this was the original. Well, actually, it's not. This is something later, but uh, 
I just can't remember if we had a roof plan that showed the condensers on the original. Do you recall? Oh, sure. Okay, in, in which case what we showed was three condensers on the roof adjacent to, the, here? to the structure. Um, yeah, frankly, I don't remember what it was, but I don't think I remember ones outside by the by this by the first floor. Well, and we, we don't need to do that. We can put them all up top. We've been asked to consider putting one. I think the one for the first floor down below. Or you could put two below and one up. But the plans that we approved are the ones that we built. Okay. Well, there's that, those plans had, I believe, three on the roof. Okay. Thanks. Those are the original plans that came with the permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, sorry, Andy, Andy I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's okay. I'm all set over here. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, following on what Mike is saying, you kind of, you sold us on this contemporary thing, and it was distinctive. It, in massing, it hasn't changed, and it fits in. And it, it, was dis, it was distinctly different. And I think everybody, we all got excited about that because... Uh, I'm really sorry I did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. Uh, and uh, you've got that rain screen system. I remember saying, can I afford that? Boy, that's interesting because we usually use that on bigger buildings. It's like rain, it's a rain screen. How do you use it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was nine units, not three. And, and Right, a little bigger project. And then you had, a, it was kind of unusual looking. And now it's heading back the other direction. And it kind of seems like it just kind of punted a little bit and got heading that direction. So I'm just wondering if you can do a few things that make it distinctive. It was distinctive. And now it's, it's not because you just, it's in the same vocabulary of the hardy board and so forth. I mean, there are a few things that, you might consider. I mean, one is, and I don't know what the detail is, but the typical band. Right now, by the way, that's another thing Mike didn't, you probably saw it and didn't realize it, but there were no horizontals like that. But now we're going back to a shingle style kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the horizontals are appropriate. But maybe you could show me what the detail is, show us what the detail of that is, and maybe really and how wide. Yeah. emphasize that. But go for it. Like make that really distinctive. So you have this nice layered, kind of strong looking thing with the bands bigger and a real detail there. I don't know what, what it is. But That's sure. a pretty significant detail. It's it's a water table over a a, is a, it? a small crown. Can you show on us top freeze? Um, but I think you gotta do a drawing of it. A real drawing of it. So we get it to scale. Not, have, that, not that you don't have a good hand there. I have a drawing. <laughs> but, you know, and, and with, with a cat molding yep. on a sub-freeze, I mean, it's it's tall. Good. And it, it, it's, it sticks out. Do you, I mean, that's... Do you, what's your detail around the windows? Is there any frame around the windows that look... Four forward? and a half. With band. It, okay. Doesn't look, look like it in this picture. The other thing is the windows, you went from the kind of unusual Palladian style with the top and the bottom to the more, you know, more standard look. So those things are all kind of drawing it back toward a typical look. I'm just wondering what you can do. Um, I think to know about what you're doing with that cornice is, is important. If you can emphasize that, maybe you've already done it. Yeah, I just don't know. I can't mm -hmm. quite tell. The other is color, and I didn't realize from looking at this that you've got the three different colors. Um, this one, I mean, maybe what maybe what you do you can consider is is really, you know, give it to the bottom, give that bottom a rush a darker, and maybe bring it up the tower, so you really create something strong and play off that horizontal a little bit more. Something to make it distinctive. I'm just making suggestions. Mm -hmm. Something to bring the distinctiveness and the differentness about it that it's going to stand out well, as we I mean, go along, not just, oh, uh, okay. Well, you're trying to preserve the the gradation, I mean, and, and those are more accurate than than the uh, than the hardy plant samples there, and that's... Go, 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 go darker with the bottom, make it punch a little bit, like in old-fashioned old buildings, a lot of them have that kind of different color base, whether it's... So it's it give it a little more, a 
a little more <laughs> distinction, yeah, something to give it the punch that we liked when you came back before and you sold us on this this kind of cool thing. Well, I mean, that's that could be, you know, five different opinions of what that might be. So that, that's sort of hard to pin that, down. Yeah, but that's, you know, I mean, I, I, I think we should give Andrew his distinction if Michael would give me my building. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think what, what Andrew's really um, <laughs> I'm not kidding, getting to is this. Right now, what we see here is more of a, not all the way traditional building, not all the way contemporary building. It's sort of a hybrid right now. I think that's I think that's my issue with it too, and, yeah. and we run the risk of, of it being distinctive in the wrong way. Yes. You know how it looks. I think what you saw was again. I mean, we're going to echo the comments of my colleagues here. With this original design was really something to, to look at and, and take notice of. Uh, especially on this major car or mass app leading up to the central dis district. Now it's it's not really contemporary. It's not really traditional. It's big. It's you know, fits as far as size with its neighbors, but it, it, I don't know if it blends in too much or not. I, I don't know. But I, I don't care for, for what's happened. And um, I think seeing it here as opposed to seeing the original, uh, seeing the emailed versions of these, um, I think I agree with Mike that it's a significant enough difference that maybe we do need to see a little bit more. And I think there are some other changes that have been discussed tonight that maybe it does warrant the reopening of a special permit. That's my concern. I just want to make a point. I actually don't like this point very much, but I think it's important to make it. Um, and it might even be worth it if you gentlemen have a chance to write down Mass Ave and don't hit anything, but just take a look and see. So what am I talking about here? I did that before I came and over the weekend I went down. It was a nice day. I just walked up and down Mass Ave, both sides of Mass Ave, just to take a look. What are we really looking at? Because I understand your points, okay? They're very, very good points. The difficulty here is that maybe a neighbor in Capitol Square can see the side of that building, okay? But nobody else gets a chance to see it. If you're in a car, the setbacks of the Capitol building and, and you know, the hard travel awning that comes out on the building beside it are out here, and here's my building, okay? And it, you, just, you, you just can't see it. Now, look, it's not, it's not, that's not a good enough reason to not do everything that you're talking about in terms of making this look good, okay? But there is a reality here that I just want to point out that as a practical matter, you have big, and, and the building behind it is enormous, okay? So there's someone who lives in that building, there's someone who lives in, in the one next door, the one where we took down the trees, and, and there's the big Capitol Square project. So for me, if I can, just sorry, Andy, but, but, you know, it's actually not about aesthetics with me. What it is about process. And the question is, is does this go so far afield? that we need to reopen the special permit. And so, so that, that's what I'm talking about. If, if I'm a neighbor, if I'm one of those people who are going to see it near the Capitol, or am I going to say, whoa, 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 what are they doing? You know, this is, I, I went to the meeting, this is what I saw, this is what they approved, and now what's been built is this. And this has, I mean, and frankly, I'm assuming it wouldn't happen because it wasn't approved, but condensers on the first floor outside, you know, there's no window, you know, this is, as I think Ken pointed out, this is a weak front, front entrance, you, you know, these are all things, this discussion that we're having, it's a just good discussion, and frankly, if you, if you knew me and you knew the, way, the role I usually play on this board, I don't take a, a much in the way of aesthetics uh, into account. I just want to make sure that it fits in with the neighborhood and everything else. I could certainly get there with this. The, my problem is this process. I just think that it's too much to be fit in to what the special condition was, which is just providing the director with the building materials. So, you know, it, this, is, this is not providing the director with the building materials. That's what the special condition was. This is something else, and for my purposes, I think, you know, we just need to reopen the special permit if you want to go in this direction. I understand the reasons why you want to do it, I understand that those economic reasons make a ton of sense, and frankly, my guess is I'd probably get on board, um, but 
from a process perspective, I'm not comfortable saying that this lives up, that this is meets this special condition. And the only way that I can that I can move away from this special condition is if you open up the, the permit. Fine. That's what we'll do. Can I say one more thing? I agree with you. I think there's enough going on. We're, we're charged with special permit to look at Mass Ave, protect Mass Ave if you want to use it. And there's enough going on, I agree with Mike, that we, we want to see it. Here's my suggestion. Go with your aesthetic, but go, go buy it all the way. Make that base the darker gray. Let the top be all white. Maybe the gray comes up and hits the tower and emphasize those horizontals, like buy into your whole new aesthetic, which is the opposite of what you had before. Go for it and make it distinctive. And present us all the details so we can see how they all go together in a brand new building, which is what this is. And then, then you know, I, I think I'm also very happy to look at it. I'm glad you're doing this project, but I think it, it does warrant a fresh look at this thing. And you'll have it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Zoning article language to come up at the public hearing, which has been moved to March 21st, and must be held on March 7th. Uh, so I'm going to turn this over to uh, Ted Field, but also members of the Mass Plan Implementation Committee. Laura. And Laura. And Laura. Right. Um, so we, we've had the language available for a while. Um, I'm happy to go through it quickly, or, or we can just dive in. Um, the Master Plan Implementation Committee, I see four members, three members sitting in the back, um, and they had wanted to make a statement. Um, we could do it article by article. Do you want to do it that way, or do you want to just... Sure. Okay. Just an overview of an each yeah. article. Yeah. 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 Just to be clear, on, on this and on the other zoning bylaw discussion, this is not a public hearing. We will not be taking comments from the public this evening. We reserve those. For March 21st, this is an overview to see where we are heading into that public hearing. And if the board would like us to make any changes before the public hearing, yes, so that we're um, we're having the hearing on the thing that you want, right? Okay. So the Article Six is um, the major changes to the uh, zoning bylaw that will allow mixed use. Um, it's not as simple as just doing it. Um, it, it has to be the bylaw has to be changed in a number of different places. Um, we, we started with definitions, our, um, and, and in the definitions we also added some new industries, um, artisanal fabrication and artistic creative production, and building step back and mixed use. So there's four changes to the definitions. Then we make uh, changes to the establishment of district section, which describes each of the business districts. In most cases, we're just adding a sentence that say it says mixed use is allowed or encouraged in um, the business district. In, and in the industrial, um, we're allowing mixed use but without residential, which is something you may want to discuss. Um, the, ch the, the multiple business changes to section 4.04 .04 is just, uh, I think I've explained this in the past, in the, in, in the past bylaw, the, um, we had something called mixed use, but it wasn't what we're now calling yeah. mixed use. The table of use regulations, we add uh, the three new categories, and um, as you can see, they're mostly by special permit. Mixed use is all by special permit. Um, then we have the dimensional and density regulations, and um, we're looking at... It's, it's, 
a little different in each of the districts, but we sort of tried to follow what was allowed in that district. We, but we are looking at um, on the higher side of uh, density there. Or small. For parcels under 20,000. Right, for, for smaller parcels under 20,000. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the different um, business districts. On page uh, 11, section 6.285, we're um, adding a, a new concept to the zoning bylaw, a building step back. So after the third story, um, any floors above the third story have to be pushed back seven and a half feet so that the perception from the street is, um, is of, less, of a less tall building. Um, and then the environmental design review section is being amended to um, include mixed use as a use that automatically will go before you. And that is Article 6. Okay. Any comments from the MPIC? Charlie? Um, we went over these changes at our meeting on February uh, 18th. And we met. Do you want to read? Come up to the table, please. Sure. And we'll have you sit here for the duration of this discussion. I think we all know who you are, but I just ask that you introduce yourself. Sure. Viewers at home. Charlie Kalowskis. I'm a co-chair with the Master Plan Implementation Committee. And as I said, um, the committee met on February 18th to review the proposed changes. And we agreed um, unanimously with the changes that are being proposed. As you know, in the master plan, um, we are trying to promote economic development. We think that um, these changes are going to be positive in terms of uh, promoting economic development in town, in, in the zones where it's allowed. Um, at the meeting, there was some discussion about um, changing uh, mixed use, allowing it in industrial zones, but we decided that's not um, what the intent is. We want to protect industrial zones right now. And I think the residential. residential mixed use as part of mixed use in, in the industrial zones, but in our opinion, we want to preserve industrial zones as industrial uses. Um, it just makes for a stronger economic base. So with that, um, like I said, we went through point by point and agreed with them, and I think now uh, we recommend that the language be adopted as, as stated. Thank you. Any questions on the target from the board? Um, Charlie, when you guys were talking about, you talked about massing and that type of thing as far as height on, uh, on some of the buildings and, and that type of thing. And you all feel comfortable with that in the, in the implementation committee, it sounds We like. do. Okay. Um, with the step back, was that a big consideration? I, I think there was a discussion about whether it should be a five-foot step back. Yeah. Was it that seven, that seven, like, yeah. seven and a half foot setback after three stories. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I think I'll say I, I like the way that you've done the table, where mixed use is on its own, and you can kind of see it compared to the right. other things. Yes. I think that's a much better way to to be able to yeah. <laughs> grasp it, basically. Um, so I think that's really helpful. Uh, for example, you go to um, three stories on the B1, and but the feet stays the same at 35. So so essentially, you know, that's that's kind of nice. So I agree with that. Um, uh, that's essentially what I have for right now. I don't know what else you may have. Uh, I'll concur. I, I um, like the change from the five-foot setback to the seven-and-a-half-foot setback. That's, I think that's a good thing. Um, I was encouraging a little bit more, just so that you have uh, have enough for a piece of space up there. If you're going to set at five, you're just going to put you know a little broom shaker of a deck up there, but give a little bit more, and then you actually have a living space up there. I think that's a good thing. Um, I have a question on the B1 on the front yard setback mm -hmm. on page five. Uh, on the mixed use, you're maintaining the, uh, the front yard setbacks at 20 and 10, 
that just fall in line with the other buildings that are in that's, that's the Yes. Uh, we're, we're thinking we still want be one to be a buffer zone between residential and heavier commercial uses, so we're not trying to change that character of the B1 zone, so we're keeping the setbacks the same uh, for that reason. And when this is not, it's, it's not retail, usually it's office offices and residential. Yeah. Like a dentist office. So okay, so you so you're envisioning in um, those zones the mixed use would be not retail. Right. Mm -hmm. so that's why the setback that way in that accident. Okay, that's yeah, in fact I think that's a very good that's a very good. Okay. Retail space is not allowed in the district. Mixed use structures without retail space are allowed in the district. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, that's basically, basically all I have here on this up here. Andy, where's the five story allowed? Um, it's in B3, 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 B4, B3, B4, B5. And those are which district? The business three is uh, village business. Right. B4 is vehicular oriented businesses, and B5 is major business. Or is uh, central. central business. So where is that on the central right? Which is from yeah. the central right in the center? Oh, it's B4 is the light pink. Yeah, B4, here, That's here in spots, heights. B5 oh, yeah. is uh, here, kind it's of right on, in the center. Right in the south side of the center. B3 is more on the north side of the center and over um, by the, the rail trail in Town Hall. And, and is there a size, as you say, of the building? Not height, but total. It's not regulated by the overall square footage of the building. With the height? Yeah, anybody can be five right. stories in that yes. district. And Ted, uh, Capitol Square in, in, in East Arlington, that yeah. is B3, is it? Uh, yes, B3. Capitol Square right here, okay. B3. I think it's great. I think it's well done. I agree. And I will also mention there's another smaller B4 zone right on the, um, the minor key site that was used yeah. across it <coughs> from Cambridge. Great. Thank you, Charlie. The next is a, um, a, a the next article is um, related to parking in um, multifamily residential and business zones. So those tend to be along Mass Ave, Broadway. Um, those are the main areas. Um, we are, uh, what, what we decided, uh, the approach we decided to take was to um, allow a reduction by special permit. We discussed at the last meeting having no um, floor, that you could go over to zero if you wanted to or needed to, and, but then it, I think there was some uncertainty about whether that was the right <coughs> approach, so we came back this time with a, a proposal for 25% being the floor. But um, I, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about that. Um, the other parts of it are that you have to do transportation demand management plan in order to get that reduction. Um, and one other change at the very end on, on um, the page number. The, the, the current bylaw allows you to go to 80% of the parking requirement in right. any zone by special permit. Originally, we had proposed taking that section out and replacing it with this, allowing a reduction of 25 to 25 percent. But it doesn't um, cover the the um, the residential zones that are, you know, not multifamily residential right, right, or right, zero. Yeah. So this allows, still lets that in that zone, um, you can still apply for special permit to go to 80 percent. And we're, we're not. This isn't really intended for single and two-family houses. It's really intended for the exceptional, um, you know, right now you can do an educational use anywhere. For instance, educational and religious, I think. So say you had a church in a residential zone and they wanted to reduce the parking to 80%. This would allow them to do reduction. that. Yeah. Versus 25. Yeah. No, versus 75. 75, 75 okay. Yeah. Much bigger. Yeah. But the, the you know, the Mass <coughs> and Broadway sites have public transit. In the center, there's the um, public parking. You know, there's there's other ways to make up for it. Um, I think there might be a typo on the second page of uh, the new uh, 
in R0. Yeah, yeah. Okay, did you get it? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, on the new 807B, um, I guess it just, it doesn't quite read like the rest of the bylaw, I think, it is, as weird as it sounds. It just, it, you almost want to say for mixed use. Um, mixed use oh, is okay. two or more distinct. You, you've already got the definition of mixed use. <coughs> I think I think all you want to say is is for mixed use, uh, the first 3,000 square feet of non-residential space is exempt from parking requirement. I think that's all you have to put. Otherwise, you're kind of putting a definition okay. in there that's a Redefining little different yeah. than the one you have above. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So it's, I think I'd say for mixed use. Not, for, not so project, just for mixed use. I don't think you'd even say project, okay. right? For mixed use. I think you go all the way down to, uh, if you just say comma, the first 3,000 square feet of non-resident exempt from parking requirements. Okay. I think that's what it is. I like the fact that there's a floor. I think that makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, from what I was hearing, it sounds like that's what folks want regardless. Um, so I, I think other than those changes, uh, I don't really have any other questions. Ken? Yeah. I only have one is uh, touching base on that 25% on, on the floor. Um, How did you guys come up with that number? Um, I mean, let's say part of it is the stairs coming down. You have to have the stairs, mm -hmm. right? And if it's um, mixed use, it's going to have to be some sort of um, electrical room, water room, or something where you have uh, it takes care of the services, you know, for the fire department, electric, you know. Doesn't do, I don't think that's what the twenty-five percent is. The twenty-five percent is the number of spaces that are required. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the way that the bylaw works is, is you have this much space, right? I yeah. think I'm right. And this much space requires you to have eight spaces. Okay. Under the current bylaw, we can bring that down to seven. Which is and 80, that's 80%. It. 80%. Yeah. We can only go 80% of what's required. So the, if, if and I should be able to do the math better than I can, but if you've got, if you've got uh, 4,000 feet, which requires eight parking spots, we right now under a special permit can bring that down to seven on our own without just that's given that power is given to us that's what parking requirements yes mm -hmm. so then this so says that we places. can go down to two okay we can go down to two parking spaces in that so if they present a good enough if they if present they oh yeah yeah, yeah. Right. i mean you gotta have the tdm you gotta have this you gotta have that have to meet seven i was areas. seeing it a little different right you were i think yeah okay that's fine I, and I don't mean to cut you off, no, no, but I think that's, that's, that's what the 25% okay. was in, in respect of. And, and, and the residential, I think we wanted to be able to go to at least one space per unit. Right now the bylaw requires two. And there's evidence, um, like for instance, the Legacy, they have, when they first opened, they had a lot of demand for the parking, but it's gone down. And they say that now one is really adequate. Mm -hmm. So the, it, that was where we started from to, to be able to cut the residential to one per unit when you when you're right on the um, bus line. But this this does go even further. So by special permit. Yeah. Right. Right. With a plan. With criteria, special criteria. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Charlie and Connor. We agree with the uh, proposed changes. Okay. Moving on. All right. Um, Article 8 is um, getting into the residential. It changes some of the, um, the definitions um, of, uh, and, and the dimensions that are required of um, basement from the basements can only changing it from being four foot three inches above grade to three foot six inches. Six inches. One foot six inches. Is it right now? It's four, four feet. Oh, four six inches. To three feet six right. inches. Right. Um, and the, uh, the seller follows that one. Um, and on the attics, instead of seven foot three, it's seven feet. This is in keeping with um, the building, the state building code. So these are all um, small changes that will 
bring the dimensions down a little bit. This hasn't changed since the last time no. we discussed it. That's right. Um, you know, I think I had asked mine earlier. Um, yeah, this, I think the fact that the seven feet marries up to the state building code is, uh, is, is an important thing. Mm -hmm. And then the, the final one is, uh, is it the final one? No, it's not the final one. Um, Article 9, and this one requires a greater percentage of usable open space on a lot, which is the, the, um, the thing that will actually limit the size of the footprint of, um, of new homes being built. It's a percentage of the gross floor area, so instead of 30% right now, that's required to go up to 40 percent in the R0, R1, and R2 districts. And again, this proposed article has not changed. That's the last time we discussed that. Okay. Um, I think we had some diagrams the last time. Um, uh, Andy and Ted are working on. Okay. Uh, Ted generated quite a few diagrams, <laughs> but. Um, so they're going to work together on. But as I, yes, yes, yeah, I like to try to find the best small number of them. Yeah, and I think I think an important point to make is, is both you know how it would cut down on square footage, but also how it would keep square footage. And I think what we're trying to do is, is find a middle ground here mm -hmm. on, uh, on some of the challenges that we have. Um, and I think. I think this does it because, as I remember the diagrams, I, I think they were still good-sized houses that yeah. you know that are in line with what people uh, would like today, but at the same time, kind of bring it down to a, a more human scale. I think. So, so I think I think the diagrams are going to be important. I think I think when you're working on those diagrams, if I could say, I, I think I'd I get them to everyone's going to going to test the envelope here, so I, I bring them out to how big it is that, that it's going to be mm -hmm. and get the massing um, that people are going to see uh, on some of these things to make sure that, you know, no one's surprised uh, when we finally present. So uh, that's my, my view of that. So. Agree. Okay. No comment. I agree. Okay. All set. No comment. So everyone was okay with it. They felt the 40% was the right, right way to go. And then Article 10 is the last, uh, has proposes two changes. One change uh, would limit the grade of a driveway to 15% except by special permit. And the other change would allow two 10 foot driveways as well as one 20 foot driveway by right. Um, it's because of, well, some of the developers that were here that night said that they, if they had the choice of doing too small, they wouldn't always do the, the deep um, double and drive right in the front. Right, right. Again, this one hasn't changed since the last That's discussion. right. That's right. Okay. No, I've got nothing on this one. Any other? All set. I do. Uh, <laughs> sorry. sorry. I know I, I pushed for this last time. Um, under the single family, where it's single family to R1s, mm -hmm. um, this would allow them to have two driveways on each side of the house, right? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to revisit that a little bit, because that seems a little to me um, um, a little too much choppiness. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see it being two family or three family having two driveways to, to, to scale things down. But when you're already at one single family, you know, I think, I don't know. Um, I just want to bring up the point and see what everybody else thinks. Uh, having one driveway, one house, may seem a little better than having two driveways. Although right now they can have a 20-foot driveway. I understand that. Yeah. If they had two, they'd be each 10 feet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But it would be like, you know, a bunch of single-family houses. Yeah, no, I And then a bunch of 10-foot chops all over the place on a single-family status where it's... That's the only thing I sort of thinking about a little bit, a little more about, and I'm, I'm just thinking how that's going to look going down the street. That's, I don't see what you guys think about that too. That's the only thing I sort of bring up as a mm -hmm. uh, as a point. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I, it's it's difficult because if they're allowed to have a 20 foot driveway now, it doesn't seem fair to say they can't have two 10 foot driveways, but they can have one 20 foot driveway if we're allowing two family houses to do that. So I just don't know how you would make that distinction. I mean, but no. Well, you, you, no. I mean, we I don't mean, really want them to have a 20 foot driveway either, right? Well, right now, it's allowed to have a 20-foot driveway That's in right. all residents right now, right? Yeah. And what we're, we're offering as a change yeah. is that in the higher density areas where it's R2, R3, uh -huh. um, break up the scale a little bit more, we're changing it so they, that they have the ability uh -huh. to have two 10-foot driveways. We're not, we're not changing anything that, that's not already existing already. Mm -hmm. Can you say in R1 that you have only one? curb cut, that would say they could, they only have one driveway, which could be up to 20 feet. What's it, what's That's the curb car driveway? Is that 20 feet? Is it 10 yeah. feet per car? Is yeah. that yes. where it is? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I'm just I think thinking. It's no, I, that, point. I'm, I'm actually agreeing with you because. That's a good point. Yeah. I have a 20 foot driveway. <laughs> it was made that way in 1932. Um, I think I agree with you in principle, but I don't know if I see it happening in a practical way. Where people go out of their way to build two separate 10 feet driveways, 10 foot driveways, on a single family lot. Um, Is there any uh, limitation to curb cuts? I'm sorry to interrupt. <clears throat> Just I want to clarify that. This is the maximum 20 foot with a, it's a 24 foot radius, and the, the curve in is 24 feet, but the actual driveway width is 20. But is there a number of curb cuts? Can you have just one? Well, but we have this, this allows Under, the second curb cut. It, currently, there's just one maximum up right, to so 20 feet. What I'm saying is in R1, single family house with only one resident, mm -hmm. can you just limit to one curb cut as it is now? Yeah. We could. We could take out single, you know, at the beginning of that sentence and just start with four, two family or duplex. And, and then two, change. three, and four. And only, yeah. To answer your earlier question, Andy. Yeah, say if you had a single family house and then all of a sudden you put in two curb cuts, which which you do, it could be a nice looped um, driveway, you know, so you don't have to back up and it just Yeah, no no no, I, I understand all that. I just I'm just thinking of the, the the density that we have in town and the, the size of lots, I just don't know if it's the kind of thing that we need to worry about necessarily. But I think if we were, if we take single out, I think that kind of cures all that for you. Yeah, would have I, the, the and that's fine, be fine with that. Covered in um, B. In the middle, where it starts with a single driveway that makes more than one intersection, a single being underlined there. Okay. That's the, that covers the, that, um, the loop thing. Okay. The yeah. arch. Whatever. What your pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, my suggestions. I, I think. <coughs> you know. And see, I think we're we're in agreement as a board to take out single family. Mm -hmm. And leave the, the two curb cuts or the two driveways to. But then we take out R0 and R1. Then, yeah. right? Correct. Yeah. So you take out single and then R0 and R1. I think it does make sense. Yeah. It's a different condition. Mm -hmm. You're trying to limit curb cuts in that case, and in the other case, you're trying to make it more habitable in another way. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I agree. I think it's a smart change. Okay. Great. Anything else? <coughs> Charlie? I think we would agree with that. Thing. Thank you. So we will be uh, a quick discussion scheduled before we move into the next thing. But the public hearing is now scheduled for March 21st. And because of the timing, we'll be voting on all of the proposed bylaws that night. We can't continue to the next meeting like we usually do. Um, <coughs> so be prepared to be here late that evening. Uh, but Staff and, and the MPIC will be doing some outreach uh, and education meetings to town meeting members and, and residents. And the next item on the agenda is how those will take place. So, Laura, I'm going to walk us through that. Okay, so um, we're, uh, the first thing we wanted to just let you know about and ask if you're available. Um, we tentatively scheduled as a forum on zoning, on the zoning articles for town meeting members in particular, but it, there'll be open meetings for anyone on either Wednesday, April 13th, or Thursday, April 14th.
and I um, just wanted to see what your schedules were. If you thought you could make those notes. Either of those, does anybody have a preference for one or the other? I think you might get more people if you do it on the bit well. Right. On the 15th and 7th, 14th, but it might even be later. Never mind. Oh, it's the night before taxes are done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Which, uh, which one's the Wednesday night? Wednesday's the 13th. Okay, I'm probably going to have a problem. Um, there's a good chance I'll have a problem with that and, and uh, the community preservation. Mm -hmm. uh, on Wednesday. On, we've got several Wednesday meetings I'm looking right now, and I don't see it on my <clears> schedule. <throat> it doesn't look like I go out that far right now. Mm -hmm. But I got a feeling it's going to be better trying to do some more days to, so as not to conflict with the AAR page. So, um, so that, I mean, I have nothing now, but it, it, could, it could get scheduled. Do you have a problem? I have a problem on the 13th. I'm okay on the 14th. Well, let's go with the 14th then. Sounds like the 14th is better all around. Okay, good. Um, so we just did a little um, quick brainstorming about what we want that to be. Um, a, a presentation about that would really start with the master plan and, and where this is all coming from and um, really start with the vision for uh, how we see the Mass Ave and the other commercial the commercial areas changing um, and then go on to explain the zoning bylaw changes that we're proposing um, and then have a question and answer. And we, we were thinking we could do it in just one night and not try to do like we did last year with the master plan where we went to four different schools. And um, what do you think? <laughs> do you concur that we can do it in one, one oh, session? Sure. For? For a, an educating town meeting members. To, to really just to familiarize them before they get to town meeting with the articles so that they're not overwhelmed by. Is it a one-way discussion or is it a two-way discussion? It would, we would have question in there. Yeah. I'm all for efficiency and not making people go to more meetings than they need to. Right. But I don't think you can do it in one, in one way. I think, you need, I think you need three. I think they need to be in different neighborhoods. The one in the Central School, perhaps, or now all in one. In East Arlington, one in the Heights. The closer you're at somebody's house, the more likely they to come out and ask questions. Mm -hmm. Think about that. See if we can find nights that work for um, the board members, and maybe not. Maybe everyone doesn't come to every meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Which is what we did with the master plan. We we had like two staff and one board member at each meeting. Yeah, you can certainly spread out the workload. Yeah. Um, also, many of the precincts have precinct meetings right before yeah. town meeting, and um, we're I'm going to contact. The precinct captains, if I can find, you know, as many as I can find, and see if we can get on their schedule toward the end of their meetings to just talk for probably a much briefer discussion at that point. Um, Is there something they can, a portable thing they can take a, a report or a oh, well, there will be a slideshow or something that they can give their own constituents, kind of their own district members? You mean um, that town meeting members can Precinct give to the resident? Yeah, like they have their own meeting. Right. Well, we would be going to that. That's well, what that is what the person is. supposed to go to their is. meeting yeah. and give a presentation. Uh, yeah, for I think, yeah, I think we need there. to there. put together our yeah. okay. some sort of presentation. <coughs> Thank you. You're saying you're going to attend every single precinct? Meeting? Well, they usually combine, so mm -hmm. not all of them have it. Okay. So, so 10 and 12 will have one. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I'm wondering you need, you have three big meetings, and then you're also going to go to every single, we're going to go to mm -hmm. every single. Do you need both of those vehicles? I mean, or maybe you can get away with two. I, I'm just wondering, because now you're going back into every single precinct meeting, giving the same speech. Mm -hmm. But not every precinct has a meeting. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe we can see how many precincts yeah, there are. Yeah, we can cover. Yeah, uh, yeah, how many we can cover. By maybe by the beginning right. of April, we'll have a sense of that. Those are precincts. Precinct meetings tend to take place. Yeah, they're they're close. Meeting. They're close to time. They but they take place after the election. 
Do you want to walk through the schedule, perhaps, which shows the sort of when different meetings are taking place? We could just tell the precinct captains, the right. leaders, that these yeah. meetings were happening and not have to go to the precinct meetings right. as well, but I think they're taking place after. <coughs> right. And then you have the three, and then that you don't have to go there. Right. They're, right. they're deputized. Think, I don't think that works timing-wise, unless, so. well, they, they all have email list serves and yeah. communication they, ability. Those meetings tend to be right before town meeting starts, and then there's the school vacation week before. Yeah, I, so like Sunday, they could all be Sunday, or more than one could be <coughs> Sunday. So again, we'd have to divide up. I think we can. I think we can accomplish what we need to accomplish because these are not these are not easy to get through in any. I mean, we've been right. through them so many times in a row, and I, I think going in and attending and, and trying to present it at a precinct meeting with all the other business that goes on may not be what people need. And so I think if we can if we can do two or three separate hearing forums of our own, let the precinct leaders know ahead of time that these are happening and then communicate it to the other people that these are going on. And we'd like to see as many people as possible there. Mm -hmm. That may accomplish what needs to be accomplished and not overtax volunteers and staff. And not the, the, right, maybe the not precinct the meetings. All right, let, let us get can more they information. Can they be given something that they can take to their precinct meeting and say, look, this is what we heard. And Exactly. Yeah, I think that's that's, that's what I'm saying. Good. I'm, some mm -hmm. may agree, some may not, some may want to present it. Right. Yeah. But if they want to present it, that's what we want to their own precinct. Mm -hmm. So, if I might, we're supposed to meet again on March 24th with the Master Plan Implementation Committee sure. to further discuss the schedule as mm -hmm. well as the kinds of materials <clears throat> that we would prepare and share with other people, and including precinct members. So that might be where we discuss what exactly is would be shareable <coughs> and then could be shared with other you know among other people other members mm -hmm. we're, we're, we'll have some materials draft mm -hmm. materials and and andrew goes to those meetings so mm -hmm. we'll have a cross That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. i do agree with andrew that mm -hmm. um it's, it's complicated and mm -hmm. precinct yeah, meetings okay. have an agenda a lot of other articles we discuss and probably not enough time, so it is better to have two or three. Yeah, and it might make sense to have someone there to answer questions sure. as they come up, but yeah. not, not, not do a full blown. Right. right. All right, we'll keep working on that. We'll need to talk more about that. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. And to the rest of the implementation committee. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, <coughs> town meeting zoning articles submitted by 10 registered voters. Um, we have several of those folks tonight. And if you could just come up and, and just update us as to what's taking place and what your articles uh, propose. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <coughs> uh, I speak out of place here. The other members of our committee can correct me. Uh, well, for instance, uh, the articles basically have not changed since we were up here with the, uh, uh, with the fellow developers demanding double driveways and don't, don't destroy our business. Um, um, but basically, we have seven articles. Uh, the first one is the uh, another way to, to attempt to get at the two, two garage doors staring you in the face is to require that they be moved back uh, and put behind the setback line, uh, which would be, um, well, you know, it's a setback line. It's so 25 in the R, R1 and R0 and 20 in the R2. Um, if you look at the um, uh, older uh, built-in garages uh, in houses that are a little more modest in dimension, uh, you'll see a lot of them are set back. Uh, or, alternatively, they're, they're on a hill, so that the, uh, it's really in the basement and, and the house itself is, is, is more straight across. Um, anyway, th th this, <coughs> this, this was an approach to getting at that. And, and my travels throughout town, talking to people, the one thing that they all mentioned that they really hate was looking at those two garage doors. And as you know, they're proliferating every part of the community. Um, the second one, Article 12, 
a friendly question we go along, just mm -hmm. okay. Um, th this one, this is the, uh, uh, the, the exception for shallow lots, and um, in, in which instead of having to be 20 feet, uh, you can be one. 20% of the entire lot width. And of course, some, if the lot is kind of triangular, I guess you get an average lot width or something. Um, we didn't see, uh, it's not a biggie, but we didn't see why that should apply to a lot that uh, is a full 6,000 feet, if that's what's in the zone. Uh, let them build a shallower house. If it's one of these little tiny lots, and I have three of them adjacent to my property, uh, where, where they have about the width of this table between the back door and my fence, but well then, yeah, yeah, it should be, they should get a little exception. Okay. Uh, Article 13 is um, gross floor area definition. Um, uh, basically, what, what we're trying to do here is, <clears throat> of course, you have the gross floor area. Uh, we're, we're trying to, uh, well, one thing, we do the same thing you did, is, is drop that seven feet to, to I mean, seven three and seven feet, and um, um, basically trying to capture within the gross floor area computation, you know, just about everything, instead of having a whole laundry list of exceptions. Mm -hmm. And this goes to, as does your your uh, usable open space uh, requirement and increase, uh, goes to trying to, to squeeze down the size of the building a bit. Um, and and uh, uh, some of these seem to be kind of, uh, you know, obsessed with exemptions, so you know, that's what we've got. Uh, Article 14 is, um, um, this one is important. Uh, this is to, as you see, it would increase, if you're putting in another building, you, you know, it's, it's a 10-foot side yard, in this house, and, and you still have a 10-foot side yard, but if that other building is right up to 10 feet, then you've got to back off a bit. Uh, and the idea is, uh, the, the point is, that these new buildings are so big, so much taller, wider, uh, deeper than the little house next door, that give a little more breathing space. Now, the, the um, Article 15 is really the, uh, I suppose, the most important uh, of what we're trying to do. As you know, that the large addition, uh, we've talked about this before, that the large addition provision of the bylaw is gained uh, on a very frequent basis uh, by the um, the original, the original foundation and the two, the two corner walls standing. Uh, and basically what we're saying is, you tear something down, build something new, you get a special permit. And, and this would allow, uh, this means that the people who are in this neighborhood, who invest in this neighborhood, who live there, not who are speculating there, they get at least, they can't stop it, but they get a say in what's going on. They have a voice. And as we say, we're not trying, we're not saying you can't build a big house. We're, we're not governing aesthetics. You want to build an ugly house. But, but the people who live there can at least express their opinion, and the zoning board can take that into effect when they, uh, when they make a decision. Um, and finally, the, um, oh no, this isn't funny. I'm sorry, there's two more. Two, two more tinkering with numbers. The height calculation, this again is something that you gentlemen must know has been games rather seriously. A lot of buildings, new buildings in this town, they're basically are four stories. They've got a basement, uh, much of which is, is at grade, you can walk in and out of it. Uh, uh, and then they've got two stories, and then they've got a, an attic, uh, which has so many dormers and sloped roofs and whatnot, that it's basically another full story. And our zoning bylaws is two and a half stories. You're trying to get at some of this uh, by limiting the, uh, the basement height. What we're saying is, and, and this thing, where these, the, the way it's measured now is from the grade before you start construction. So uh, you've got a, a grade like this, and you say, okay, so you look, 
can go up 35 feet from here. But what they do is they cut it down to there so they can have this dried in carton grabs there. So we're saying it's 35 feet, should be 35 feet. Go from the lowest point to the highest point. And 35 feet seems to be a pretty standard. We've looked at the zoning bylaws in other communities. It seems to be a pretty widespread standard, although I, I've seen a few that are lower. Said, well, let's just leave it at 35. But let's just have a more honest measure. And honest, uh, 35 feet measured after you're done. So, so they've, they've, got to, they've got to come in with show what their plan is really going to be. Mm -hmm. And the final one is, um, is, is again, the, um, is, is the half story. And we, we internally wrestled a lot about this. Uh, I, think, I think everyone feels that this, this um, the so-called half story with all the dormers and whatnot that makes it practically a full third or fourth story uh, is uh, is kind of excessive, and so, but <clears throat> we couldn't get among ourselves. We, we couldn't agree on exactly how to do. It. We looked at a lot of other uh, uh, bylaws in other communities, and it didn't look like anybody's got a really good handle on it, or at least a handle that's easily comprehensible. Some people are talking about, um, uh, I don't know, four on ten or something like that. I, I don't know what that means. So. Uh, we, uh, so basically, we just tried to capture more things that would be included in, in w where you measure the, uh, the, the seven foot height. So if you've got a closet or, or a, um, uh, you know, a place where the air conditioning equipment or something is housed or something, we try to capture that all so that you know, the half story gets to be more of a half story. So that's basically where, 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 where we are at. Um, and um, can I, I'm sorry, Mr. Ward. Yes, can, go ahead. Can you go back to Article 16 for a second? 15. 16, sorry. 16. 16. On the height calculus. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you just go through that with me one more time? As to what, you know, what, where we're calculating from and how that's reviewing from the current? Well, um, uh, maybe um, one of those with a, with a side. It's an old old house, and, yeah. but it's the garage is original on the side, but it's oh, in yeah. the basement. Mm -hmm. So because we're built into the hill. Oh right. So so that's really I, I'm just I'm I'm trying to read this, and frankly, even I'm having trouble trying to figure out what I would do. Well, the um, had I been building new. <laughs> um, because I think it's important for us to you know uh, understand what it is that. What exactly? well, the, 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 I mean, if we diagram it out, well, yeah, yeah and, and I think probably a, a diagram would be useful. There are, I think, Mr. Loretti can probably explain this more clearly than I can. That's the existing uh, high uh, definition. Uh, we 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 you reviewed this yeah, to some detail with staff. Um, right, but but you haven't. No, no, we, we haven't. haven't no, 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 no. We, we, uh, we yeah. want you to, yeah, but but I, I I don't want to confuse things by saying the wrong thing. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So, uh, Chris, I, could, could you? Well, I can give a shot. Is, is your is the garage you're referring to below grade or is it at grade? It's well, I mean where it is, it's at grade. Okay. Where, but <laughs> where, but on if you look at the front of the house, it's well below grade. So because He's we're built into a hill, hill. hill, I have a four foot retaining wall all the way around my house. Okay. So from the street though, it, you would drive straight in. It's flat. You don't. Have... Yes, it's flat. Um, this is the type of garage that that we've seen in, in a lot of the. The older house. Yeah, and I'm over in the Heights, yeah. so I'm over on well, uh, you know, our, Newport our Street. Uh, everything, everything is the everything Heights. West yeah, exactly. We're like this, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but actually, the, the, I mean, the, the, there's. I think we're looking at several, several different things here because there's, there's different <laughs> there's different rules if you're on the more than five percent grade. Yeah, and and I looked at that too, and it really didn't give much relief. I don't think. Well, From, it's, it's just a matter of. Well, Chris, could, could, you, could you jump in here and... and uh, yeah, I guess, you know, the way that it's written, it depends on the, it depends on the slope of your lot. And if, if it doesn't exceed 5%, then there's no change in the way that the building height is measured. But, okay. 80% of my lot, everything other than the driveway, is four feet above the driveway and the street. So you're saying you might be measuring from the... I, I don't know what I'm measuring from. 
am I measuring from Newport Street or am I measuring from the back of my house? So right, right now it's the average average, curve. average right? it's the average on, curve. On, a, on a flat, they, they, well, it, unless the grade is 5%, you, 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 you measure from the curve line, right? The average grade the average curve line. Yeah, yeah the, the average curve, well, goes to the curve and, line. There you go. And where I live, that's not uncommon. Yeah. I mean, all of us on our side. It's on the other side of the street, and it's perfectly flat. Uh, or it's not flat, but it's in the back half of his house. So in mine, it's the front. Um, so, so everyone has kind of a four-foot retainer. Oh yeah. Um, okay. I, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of that. It's it's, it's all over town. Right. Um, so, well, yeah, and I think that's the issue. Unless, so, I, I guess what I request is, some, look, given how common that is. I guess I'm I'm a little concerned with so how you know lines, this particular average grade. grade. Yes, but this this but work. His house is this, okay? Let's say this is the street right here. <laughs> yeah, King can drive. Say this is this is the street right here, and you get a person right here. Yeah. There's a little wall. Yeah, there's a wall like this. Well, maybe that height, but a containing wall. Actually, no, it's it's that height because I only have about a foot and a half. Yes. Yeah, so it right comes there. across like this, and say his, uh, you know, it's not that tall. Not that tall. It's like this right here, okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh, slowly, like that's so you so more or less you drive in on, on one side of the street. I guess yeah, like it's up here. So down here is that. Yeah. What I'm saying is, the average grade is where the 35 feet is measured right now. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so I take it from the bottom grade, to yeah. the oh, all the so way up to the back. So if you if you do what you're saying, John, then you you're taking the final lowest grade and measuring 35 oh, feet my. from there. So that's gonna. That's that's a problem for my neighborhood. Right? Because because I see what you're saying. So this is it right now, right? right. And I'm taking the 35 That's, from there. Call that the average grade. Yeah, the call side. that the average grade. Right. I'm built into the hill. You're saying I have to go from the front of... The lowest point. The lowest point. Right. That's a little unusual. Where the wall's exposed. Yeah. Comes out All, well, it's at the end at the bottom of that wall. Mm -hmm. To get to my front door, you have to go up nine steps. Right. Then you get to your front lawn. To get to my front lawn, you have to get to five. Well, you have to go in five. So, so the driveway is, is here? Yeah. So the driveway, no, the driveway is all the way down here. Okay. So you come around here. That's the side. <coughs> so if you're looking at, but on the front of the house. It doesn't really here. matter in a way. It's just saying if you take average grade, that allows you 35 feet from the average. So you pick up a little bit at the low end so you can get into your garage. Yeah. Right? But your, your house will be lower than 35 feet at the where the where it slopes up, but you're changing it to be at the lowest point. So right, you shrinking the house down so even the so floors where well, it's high yeah, on the back. Will my be house would have been non-conforming in 1932, yeah. right? I mean, it's it's no, but, you, but, but people but, but, usually go average grade. Now you're stuck to a one-story building if you're trying to build new. In that, in that that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and, yeah. and it will eliminate well, the, 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 now, but now, how high is your house? Your my house is high. high house is. My house is my house is high. It's, uh, it's a true two and a half stories. It's two and a half stories. Well, but is that 35 feet? No. Yeah, I'm sure it's probably 30. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how it's, you know, I don't have a rule of that long. I would hold it on my 36 foot ladder. <laughs> Picks it up <laughs> to the gutters, I guess, but uh, that's about it. So, so I guess the point being, I guess what I'm saying is, is that is that this is fairly draconian for one side of the, for at least one side of the um, town. I'm concerned with that. So just by mm -hmm. just by definition, uh, because we don't have a choice and. And frankly, the, the funny part is, is the thing that you're concerned about isn't as much a concern where we are because you're looking at like a, a wall and a shrub and, you know, a nice stairway mm -hmm. up. So you're not going to get a garage going right there right. anyway. So, so I, I guess I just suggest that maybe mm -hmm. in your, in your house may maybe that might be an issue. Either. There are a lot of two Well, stories. it's certainly 35 feet, I'd say, a from the... Three-story house? Two and a half stories. Yeah, yeah, it's a solid yeah. two and a half stories. Solid two and a half stories. Okay. So I wonder if that really is 35. Or you, I mean, from the garage? Yeah. Well, 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 probably we'll keep from the garage over 35. Yeah, exactly. You're over 35 yeah. in your garage. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think, I think I'm not over 35 from the... From the, from from the lawn. Basement, from the lawn, yeah. From the lawn, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're 35. Yes. Well... Anyway. I'd suggest that. 
you, you see what the, pro the if you look at that house in Spring Street, for example, is a perfect example. Uh, oh, the one, uh, the new one that they built on the rock? The, the, the one that the, where the Cocaris is sold. Yeah, where we, we, we a town meeting is yeah, the one that yeah, created up, that house. We gave, we gave up the, we gave up the yeah. street taking and yeah. they built two houses there. Yeah. Have you seen that? I, 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 only from the access road. I haven't. I've, I've seen it from the access road. All right. Well, if you see it up close, you, you'll see it's a four-story building. Yeah. It looks like a. Well, I mentioned it at town meeting last year. It looks like a small hotel. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to get at that. I mean, somebody suggests a better way to do that. Uh, I'm. We're we're, we're, we're. we're ready to. Right yeah, there. yeah, and I, I guess, I guess my, and, and hey, look, this isn't a hearing, so I, should, I shouldn't even be quiet. I just wanted to, I just wanted to understand what we were talking about, and this was helpful, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, well, that's, um, I guess, um, I guess that's where we are. Okay. And if I may make, I know this isn't public hearing, et cetera, but one comment about your, dri your two driveways idea. Um, I'm going to say, at the public hearing, and they tell me this, sir, those driveway, you're going to have two driveways. There ought to be a buffer zone between that driveway and the next guy's property. And that driveway ought to be built so it doesn't flow water into his property. Because mm -hmm. that's, I mean, one, 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 one is, you know, I don't think it's enough, but, but have another sea of asphalt road right at the other guy's property line, I think is. Kind of overdoing. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the information. Thank you for your update. Thanks for the drawing. Next is uh, the Atwood House at uh, Twenty One Mass Ave. Uh, Mr. Warden was kind enough to uh, <coughs> let inspectional services know that. There are some changes afoot there. Uh, Inspectional Services is investigating it right now. They, they have issued a, um, a citation. Good. Okay. Where do we go from there? Right here. Well, that they're the ones that have to do it. Are no, we involved in that? We can. Well, this was part of. So does CBS own? Yeah, would been. No. 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 It's owned by the Noise Trust. Okay. And they, CBS has a like a long-term lease. Gotcha. From the noise trust. Gotcha. Yes. So it was part yeah, of yeah, yeah. But it was part of the special project. Yes. Uh, Housing Corporation had a plan at my instigation to convert that into affordable housing, put an L off the back. And if you look at your special permit, you'll see that there are reserved parking places in case they do that. That's correct. And then the noise people said we well, can only have a 20 year lease or something. Wait a minute. How can we put in all this money into it and be kicked us out at the end of 20 years? Uh, so they didn't go forward, so they just let the house sit there and sort of unravel. For a long time, big pressure getting cut the lawn. Mm -hmm. They finally did that. Now they boarded it up. The only, only for two months now. Um, so they have issued a citation. They have, yes, I have it here. Okay. Say. All right, I, I hadn't, uh, is that for you? Uh, I May I look at it? Sure. Okay. I, 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 I heard from everybody to whom I wrote it, except mm -hmm. Mr. Byrne. So, Mm, well, let's see. Oh, okay, you saw you sent the noise. Mm. Well, the, 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 I mean, the question is whether the permit should be reopened. No, it can be turned down. It can be turned down. Yeah. Who owns it? The noise family. It used to be a car dealership called Hodgdon Noise. Yes. N -Y -E -S, mm -hmm. and the Noise family owns the whole That's property. Right. And they sold? They re they're leasing, like 99-year lease to CBS. Okay. You need to look at the permit. I know. I'm reading it right now. I mean, yeah. The permit? No. Maybe, yeah, parts no, of the permit. If I may, Mr. Chairman, you really yes. need to look at the permit conditions because I don't think um, it can be turned torn down without your permission. Yeah. As yeah. the ARB yeah. by the terms of the special permit. No request to move or demolish the house by a request, but they have to make the request to you. Yeah. You right. are the you are the controlling body. And you're right, John. When while it's at this point, they have to maintain it. They can't. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. in the special yeah. permit. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's why I quoted the specific terms of the uh, agreement, which uh, 
So <coughs> probably not everybody remembers all the so details. Let's, let's get that special permit out and look, give a copy to us so we can sure. look, prepare that. Well, it's just quoted in the letter. Yeah, that part is, but we're looking at another part that says what's the... Oh, I, I thought I quoted both those sections. No, in terms of the future of the house. Yeah. I have it right now. Do you? Yeah. Uh -huh. The application the Atwood House will be retained on the site. Redevelopment of the house will require the amendment of this special permit. Any modification? Yeah, basically, yep. we didn't want them to even ask to demolish it within two years. Right. But it doesn't it. say that it's been a end well, without we our permission. hoping that it would be maintained and then turned into housing. Right. Yeah. But nothing has happened with it since. And now it's boarded up and something. But they're not allowed to not to maintain it. They can't not maintain it. Right. 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 So I think we do need to reopen it. Well, can we? Come in. Is maintain the fine. Well, can we? Uh, it is. Well, let's talk, well, let's talk about it. Uh, so, can has staff gone and and, and talked to uh, the trustees to see you know whether they can have a conversation about about plans, etc., and why we shouldn't uh, be opening up the special permit to take care of you know this issue. I, I, guess. I haven't had that conversation with them. I, I participated in conversations between the Housing Corporation and the and uh, Jeffrey Noyes, and um, he really wasn't interested in doing anything with the property. It's really what it And how long ago was that? That was way back when? No, it was a couple years ago. But okay, not, a couple years ago. Not, yeah. And it happened more than once, I think it was twice. But, um, it's, yeah. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a great looking piece of property to begin with, and now that it's boarded up, it's an eyesore. Right. And the boards are coming down. So, but I think I'm <coughs> speaking for myself, and not necessarily the chair of the board. I think I would like to have them come in and explain to us what exactly their intention is with this property. And it's it's vacant. It's a risk, and on um, several levels, it's an eyesore, as I've said. There are conditions in the special permit that aren't being followed, that haven't been followed since it was put in place. Which could affect the whole special permit. Which could affect the entire special permit. And as we've seen with other properties, the citation will only go so far mm -hmm. as, as the punitive measure. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it shall remain in its present location, uh, reasonable and additional efforts to maintain its present condition, to prevent any damage from elements or otherwise. That was a big part of that permit. I remember. Okay. So well, I'll send you all a copy of the permit and we'll try to bring the noise, the owner in. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. That was ancient history. Right? Thank you both. As we're all aware, I mean, so I was remiss at the beginning of the meeting tonight. Uh, I should have introduced the new director, uh, Jenny Ray, who will be helping us in every yes. possible way. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with you. I've done that a couple of times. Um, but tonight I asked Jenny to prepare an update on a status of all the committee moves for which we're responsible. Ooh. This will only take five minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a discussion oh, yeah. that we haven't had in a while. There's been plenty of turnover on the board. Uh, and it's just something that's worth discussing now so that we can start thinking about uh, tackling some of these issues after town meeting. Right. So first of all, thank you for the welcome. I'm really delighted to be able to work with all of you. I really look forward to it. Also, we have a great team of people who have obviously been doing lots of great work um, in the last for, for a number of months and will continue to be working with us as we get through town meeting. Um, so you'll see, you'll see all of us again and again. Um, for the next couple of months. But um, yes, we uh, talked about having a quick update on two accounts. One is that a number of staff people from the department serve or serve various committees, serve on the committee or actually provide sort of administrative support. Um, so that's part of this update. And then also many of you 
serve as A or B members or as a designee or representative on a number of different committees. So I've, with staff help, um, pre uh, prepared this memo which basically summarizes one recent highlight or two recent highlights from the committee um, and then an upcoming meeting just to give you, you know, some information and background um, and if you are interested in participating going forward, letting us know on the team, we'd be happy to point you in that direction. So I'm not going to go through everything in great detail. We thought we would actually focus on one of the committees, um, which is the Housing Production uh, Plan Advisory Committee, which is on the back page. Laura has a handout related to that, which will be coming back to the board um, probably in May, maybe June, yeah. for adoption. Um, so it's this one we thought was important to kind of um, do a little spotlight on. And then I think there's one more item on the agenda that will relate to the Community Preservation Committee, which is a letter from the uh, conservation agent. So we'll, we'll move back to that. Back to there that. might be another update related to that committee as well. But let me know if you have any questions basically about this update. Otherwise, we were going to focus on this. All right. All right. Good. Thank so, you. Laura. I wanted to just um, take a minute to update you on the housing production plan, which we started working on in October, I think. You, in August, last August, you appointed a committee. Um, I think we had our first meeting with the consultants, which had included Jenny. But, uh, Jenny left that team and joined this team. <laughs> and, um, I got cool. Come for free. <laughs> and it's, it's moving very quickly. We got this grant that we have to send all the funds by June 30th, so we really need to, we needed to move at a very rapid pace. And Andrew was on that committee as well. Um, we have, we had a, a forum in um, January that was a, well, January, February 2nd, that was pretty well attended. I'd say there were about 40 people there, including um, Selectman Joe Curo and um, State Rep Sean Garbley. And, um, it was kind of a visioning thing where people talked about like what would you really like to see in Arlington that you think is missing in terms of um, residential development. Um, these are some of the things that ha that came up. There was a surprising interest in co-housing and those kind of um, solutions where people have some kind of shared community land or and even possibly a building. Um, people were interested in. Uh, ways to connect people who are overhoused with people who are looking for housing and um, the subject of accessory apartments came up more than once <laughs> and also there was a lot of interest in yeah. both mixed use and also building housing near services so near um, stores near the library near town hall industrial areas <laughs> Sorry. no that did not come i'll save that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, anyway, th there's another public forum in um, April 7th that's going to be focused on solutions, strategies, and recommendations. And um, so I think that one will be really interesting to see what the consultants have come up with from this first forum. And um, I wanted to just, it's important that you know what's going on because you, as the planning board, have to endorse this plan. So when it's done, we will bring you a draft plan which you can make comments on and then vote on. Then it goes to the selectmen and then finally it goes to the state for their acceptance. Is that what it's called? It's, it's adoption and approval. Adoption and approval. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing the recommendations as they come. And if you're at all interested, we would love to have your participation in the um, strategy session on the 7th. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on to, and again, this is just a quick overview. This is another item that we will tackle in force after the meeting. Yes. But a status of uh, properties owned and managed by the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, yes. Yes. The Redevelopment Board technically manages a number of properties. And um, I would love to have a longer conversation about this at a future meeting. And we can together look at sort of the, you know, a status of each one of those properties. Um, profit and loss, you know, sort of looking at the revenues, looking at the understanding a little bit about the leases, understanding maybe the, a little bit about the tenants. 
some of this might be a refresher to some of you. Some of you might not know anything about these details. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought it would be good to have a conversation about it and also for you to, to understand and be engaged with the responsibilities that the board has related to those buildings and the management of them because there's important conversations going on right now that I feel um, your voice is needed to be a part of in some way. I will channel that temporarily, but <laughs> imagining I know what you're going to say. But um, in the future, I would like to have a deeper conversation about it. So two of the items that are currently um, sort of, you know, right now items that are moving forward. One is an RFP that we are working on for the Central School. It is in progress, but not issued just yet. And we're still working on issues uh, with potential new tenants. And uh, you may or may not know there's a potentially a very large space that's going to be vacated. So we will need to secure and find a new tenant. And the, the way that we do that is we go out to bid and have yeah. an RFP and um, with um, a process to then secure a new tenant um, or tenants, depending upon who occupies the space. So that, that's just a very quick overview, but it will be coming back um, later on, and I want to have a bigger conversation about it. The second item is the Jefferson Cutter House, which Ted actually has been spending a lot of other time other than on <laughs> master plan articles, uh, not I mean zoning articles. Um, on helping to do renovations for the Jefferson Cutter House. Yes, and, long overdue um, exterior renovations. And so with, those with a mass historic grant uh, matching town funds. And CDBG funds. Right. And that'll be wrapped up actually by the end of June. Yes. Um, but again, would like to get you on board with understanding what's happening and again, understanding and just validating your role in that process. So that was. That was all that I wanted to introduce for this evening. I'm glad to answer any questions or ask Ted or Laura to help okay. answer questions. I guess one one thing on the on the central school specifically, uh, with that potential large amount of space coming up and that mm -hmm. type of thing, um, has the town done a space analysis for their own requirements? Because um, it seems to me that you know it. it might be a good time mm -hmm. to figure out what those might be. I, in the back of my head, and I don't know why I think this, but somewhere along the way, I thought that if you use the mass school, you know, funds basically, that you couldn't have administrative offices in the school. Mm -hmm. Right now, the, I know all the school offices are on the sixth floor of the high school. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I, I don't know why I think this, but I remember reading somewhere along the way that if you use the mass building, the mass school building, the whole, yeah, the whole, the whole fund, that that administrative um, uh, offices couldn't be part of that. Maybe it's just that it wouldn't be part of the funding, and you'd have to cover that yourself or whatever else. But I'd hate for us to kind of go into that whole process mm -hmm. and have this whole process over here and not have kind of a space analysis between the schools and the town and, and to figure out what what might be required, so, does that make some sense? I have to ask if you know of any spatial and space analysis. I don't know. No, I, I don't, I mean, I, I, having been sorry, doing I, this, I, no, no, I know, I, I, I guess I'm saying hey, there occurred. isn't one, but I, and I don't know how formal it has to be, but I think we should at least do a back of the envelope on, on uh, requirements so, and, and that type of thing. Just to, and I, I, mm -hmm. I also don't know about the use of school building authority. Yeah, me neither. I don't know why I think that. that. Specifically. What, what we're happens. talking about here is we're working with the town manager's office on dealing with the space and the RFP process as well. Yep. So we will be looking at space needs for the town. That okay, that was part already the, part of the process? It's okay. going to be part of the process. Yeah, I think it needs um, to be. But okay, it, I'm not sure that it's the kind of analysis that you're exactly talking about. Yeah, I I, I'm not sure I was thinking it would be hugely formal. The, the one thing I know is is that if we if we went into a, a lease for the space, a long-term lease for the space, and only a year or two later, mm -hmm. we found ourselves requiring town space, mm -hmm. I, I think we would not we have done enough on our own uh, to to make sure that that isn't the case okay. I guess and I'd be a little bit concerned so I will bring those concerns to the town manager yeah, yeah. thank you okay so a future meeting we'll talk in greater depth yes All right. approval of meeting minutes from the last two things. like um, the only thing I had, uh, so on the Jan 28 minutes, uh, we got literally one come on it. 
Um, in the first paragraph of the actual minutes, at the, the very last sentence says, the chairman opened the floor to discussion. I, I don't think you open the whole floor to discussion. I think it, I think the chairman opened the topic for discussion. Yes. Just because the whole floor wasn't open. Um, and then on the Feb 1, uh, there's just a hanger on town hall over here. It was over at the senior center. It, we, we just have town hall at the top. The rest is the rest is fine. It's it's just that was a hanger on. Thank you. Uh, I didn't see anything else in those that gave me pause, so that was it. I'm fine. All set. All set. Okay. I'll move to approve the January 28th and February 1st minutes of the small corrections. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Uh, we received uh, two pieces of correspondence this interim period. One was discussed earlier from John Gordon uh, regarding the 21 Mass Ave. We also received a letter from the Conservation Commission asking us for a letter of support for the Spy Pond Edge Protection and Erosion Control Project. Uh, I'll turn that over to staff. Yeah, this is just a, I this is a letter. As, so I probably the, know as much as yeah, well. The, so, yeah. so the Community Preservation Committee, relatively newly formed, I don't know the exact date of formation, but okay. now in the process of reviewing applications that have been submitted by a number of groups. One of them was from, from the Conservation Commission for this particular project. And I think that you'll see a lot of these types of letters moving forward, which is basically a letter of support for their project to the to the com uh, Community Preservation Committee, so board to board um, type of support. Of course, Mike also sits on that committee, and so I don't know if he's one of the people who's reviewing this particular project or not. Yeah, I've seen this project. I've seen the application. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a, you know, it's a good project. In fact, the other thing I can do is give you a rundown of the different projects because. So this be, is if you if you want to just stick with this letter first, um, and then sure. maybe a little more on that. This is just a, from Corey Beckwith, who's the conservation administrator, who provided me with some details about the project, if you have any questions about the, the type of restoration they'd like to do to Spy Pond, where they would utilize CPA funds in order to do that conservation work, restoration. Protection and erosion, specifically. I'll get my words right. So that the request is if you would write a letter of support. And I think they would like to have that by March 17th, which is why it's on your agenda this evening. Because they are going, each um, entity who's applied for these funds is going before the committee. Actually, I'm, I'm actually certain that they will want it before uh, March 16th. They're presenting on the 16th. Okay. I'm sorry, but I don't Please. think you will because okay. the applications are already in, and with okay. the applications, not today, not in this round, in future rounds. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, oh, well, I think yes, in the oh, future. in not, the future, I think so that's going exactly forward, right. I think the board will be asked to support every project out there, and I think before we can necessarily support 
a project as a board, I think we need to have more than a request. We need to know exactly what's being asked for. We need to know what kind of cost mm -hmm. we're supporting. We need to know a little bit more about the project. And I'm not saying that we should say no to this request, necessarily, but I think we're looking at all of these CPC funds that come in. Maybe we want to choose projects that are a little more suited to our, to our own mission as a board. I agree with you. Or not? No, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. And I think it's it's hard to recommend or whatever else without knowing all of the other ones mm -hmm. and the cost of this one. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, the letter is nice. And yeah, we if, if money weren't an object, uh, we do it all. We do it all, exactly. But unfortunately, money is an object. Mm -hmm. So, so I, my own view is is uh, I don't know whether it it's smart for them to ask. I don't know whether I'm. Uh, and it's not. Yeah, and I don't mean for it to sound like we're shooting this down because it seems like a, a great project. But I don't think we can be on with supporting everything that comes across because it'll either weaken our the ones we do choose to support, or we're, we'll support things that may not be completely consistent with our own mission and our own agenda. I agree with that. I think I think on based on the letter, I'm not comfortable, like you know, putting in a letter of support. Having read the application, I would support it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and and that's, and that's, that's kind of put on my other hat. But that's, that's the thing is, I'd like to, I'd like to know a little bit more. Well, about right, and I think more. that's so, and maybe that's what we should talk about. What we should talk about maybe is a report back on the different projects, and do we want to, do we want to throw our weight behind any of them, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, specifically? Yeah. Maybe the, the only that's reason I'm bringing, the, the only reason I'm bringing up this now to make it perfectly clear to anyone in the Conservation Commission who's watching this. Is that this is this is only because this is the first time this request has come up. It has nothing to do with the project itself that's in front of us. But I think anything going forward, we'd want to know. We at least want to have the opportunity to ask a few questions about what's being asked for. Right. I think I think there's that. I also I, you know and once again, just to back up on a little bit of history on on CBA. I mean, we started in October actually, and in, in October November time frame, which put us way behind the eight ball as far as uh, getting projects in. Because we needed to get a plan, a community preservation plan, we needed to get an application, we needed to do all these things. And the way that the application will work in the future is there'll be a two-step process. There'll be a preliminary application and then there'll be a final application. And in between that preliminary and final, the idea is, is for those folks to go out and get different committees, tell their story, and get their support. So when they put the final application, that'll happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, this year, because it's such a rush, we could only do a final application right out of the gate. And so there ended up being nine uh, different projects that were put in uh, to, uh, to the CPA. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so this is one of those projects. Um, and you know the things that the CPA is concerned with aren't necessarily the things that this board would be concerned with, such as is it okay to give CPA funds to this? We, we may not care about that and never do that analysis. It's kind of like we think it's good. Let's, let's, uh, let's recommend it even though CPA funds might not be appropriate, right? So we, we, we shouldn't necessarily care. That's kind of the CPA's you know, job, not ours. So um, anyway, so I can kind of go over those projects if people are quite curious or I can, you know, we can talk about this one, whatever you want to do. Or, or yeah, actually, more, but I think I think I, I'm a, in agreement in this short truncated period. I don't know that it makes sense for us to recommend anything this particular year. So. Mm -hmm. We have the list out. So yeah, you want us a rundown. Okay, the so the the projects that uh, that have been uh, 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 applications that have been uh, submitted are um, uh, the town of Arlington historic assessment of municipal buildings. Um, and that's the uh, Historic Commission that's, that's put that one in uh, with the help of the town, I believe, on that one. Um, the Historic Preservation of the Jason Russell House. Um, so that's, a, that's one on the Historical Commission as well. Uh, funding for a new roof for the Historic Preservation of the Schwann Mill. 
actually really looked at that one very closely. So the way that the, the committee works, there's, um, there are uh, nine committee members, actually, and there were nine projects, actually, so it was kind of yeah. interesting. So we all uh, took two to read and uh, comment on very closely, and then we all kind of s skimmed the rest and, and everything else. Um, so that's one of the ones that I happen to look at. It's a good little project. Uh, stabilization of the Whittemore Robbins Carriage House. Uh, that's got some issues with it. Uh, 20 Westminster. This is actually a really big project. It's the one that we talked about. Um, I don't think I was here for that meeting, but um, uh, the, the R route, uh, uh, wrote a letter over to the ZBA uh, yeah. on that project. So they're seeking, uh, a, I, think, I think, a good amount of money, over a million dollars on that project. Uh, Kim, CPA? Yes. Oh, yeah, you haven't seen that one? Uh, well, I saw it from the other side, from the CBC side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one point two. Yeah. So, but it's pretty early. Yeah. Yeah. So, is what it looks like. Um, the Kimball Farmer House, um, also, yeah. we're going to put in. That's the one uh, that's over on 4th Street that we talked about, mm -hmm. the one that was made into three, that they're making into three units. Uh, the Arlington Housing Authority Life and Skills Building in Drake Village. So that's a really interesting project. It's um, uh, it's it's where uh, it, so it's in Drake Village, I guess. It's it's taking one of um, uh, one of the buildings and making it into an education and uh, life skills. Uh, and, and opening up where it currently is into more housing, I believe. I think it has a double effect, doesn't it? The life and skills is actually at Monogamy Manor. Which oh, that's is what it is. Housing. Sorry, so, so it moves over there, there and then it, they make that yeah. into it's it. Not it looks like it. It, they, they figured that out. Yeah, I think we were concerned, uh, we were concerned about that. Is that what it's just the Drake Village. So it's the Drake Village portion of it? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, and then the uh, Robbins Farm Park Field and the ADA renovation. This is a big uh, open space and recreation uh, project uh, to take all of the Robbins Farm fields, irrigate them, uh, new sod, um, new fields, uh, that type of thing. Take the basketball court that's on the little rise in the back, uh, tear the concrete up out of that and put a new uh, surface on that, uh, as well as some historical um, um, statues and, and that type of thing, um, describing the old Robbins Mansion that was right up there. As well as making uh, the different uh, uh, parts of the park ADA accessible. So a really nice project. Um, and frankly, it's kind of why Arlingtonians, I think, um, uh, put the C, uh, CPA into place in that it, you know, it would otherwise be in the capital budget, and now we get to be able to use um, the CPA funds for it as well. Um, and then the garden over there also making that ADA accessible. And that's also a nice one because the Friends of Robbins Farm Park is doing quite a bit of funding themselves on it. So the notion is, is when you have a group like that who are doing so much to be able to kind of support them and what their um, mission is as well. And then finally, the um, uh, spy pond protection and erosion control which is what you have in front of you, which is a really interesting uh, project as well. So, a nice project. So, so those are the ones. I mean, I, I would think that in the future, you know, the person on the CPA would come before us and maybe we take a good hour right. uh, to go through them, discuss them and that type of thing. Right now, we got our heads, heads down. If people, we are actually going to more formally come before the different boards, I don't think the ARB was on the list because it's more about the money this year. So frankly, it's getting in front of the Finance Committee and the Capital Planning Committee um, and talk to them about the different projects as well. But if there's anything that anyone wants more information on or anything else, that's obviously why I'm over there. So. Okay. Anyway. Good. No, that's helpful. That's very sorry. Yeah. I think that, I that droned on there for a little while. No, no, no. That's, that's fine. We're still we're still ahead of schedule. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. <clears throat> Good. So I think, yeah, we will um, respectfully decline as a board to support the request of the Conservation Commission. Okay. I will deliver that message on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> We think it's a real good yeah. project. Yeah. It's just I will, premature I will, for I will us explain to choose to support them it. why the conversation we've had. Um,
So new business, if any. Um, I really would like to commend every member of the Master Plan Implementation Committee for the work they've done getting zoning <coughs> bylaw amendments to us in the format they're in. Um, Charlie and everybody else on that committee has put in an amazing amount of time. Um, Ted Fields has put in an insane amount of time. Laura Wiener has put in an insane amount of time. They both deserve our a huge debt of gratitude. Uh, and Joey. From all of us. I'm and Joey Blesko. Well. I didn't see you behind <laughs> Wendy. I'm sorry. Um, especially with the short staff there. Um, and they deserve our thanks uh, for thank the work you. that they put in. Oh, thank so you. Thank, thank you all. Most appreciate it. Yeah. Any other new business? All right. Schedule going forward. Uh, March 21st is our public hearing. Where will that be? This evening. Okay. Um, what's the what's the quorum need for the public hearing? Uh, right, three. Three. Yes. Uh, right now, I have a conflict at least for half of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Until probably eight thirty. I'm trying to get out of it. It's it's a tough one for me to get out of, frankly. So um, I'm hoping to, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I'm hoping it cancels, <laughs> essentially. Um, but I'm probably not in control is the only problem there. So I will try to make it over. So I think we'll be there late. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. And I guess I, uh, well, we can talk about that. I, I, yeah. Okay. I just want to make folks aware of that. Right. Well, we will be we will be voting, voting. that night, um, and then beginning April fourth, we will start to discuss strategy for outreach and uh, presentations to town meeting. So we have uh, well, we we sort of tentatively have these meetings here. The They're the 11th. April April fourth and the eleventh. Well, when does town meeting begin? April twenty fifth. Okay. Right. Um, and so it's really just whether or not you want to meet on April 4th or 11th. Right. Then the Monday in between the 11th and the 25th is Patriot's Day. Right. Okay. We will. For example, you may have a special hearing, uh, a special permit hearing. We may have. Yeah, now you I'm sure that the Christian Court is Right, exactly. You just mentioned that that would be April 4th. Right. To Mark. Okay. Potentially. do the public hearing notice. In the left hand, or to see if it depends on what gets to us. Mm -hmm. That's and up to him in a way. And what about the Atwood House? We may have the Atwood House on as well. I, I would I, like to do that. We're not going to open that up yet, right? We're going to send around the permit, and then we're going to um, bring the, bring him in. That's not the same as as having a public hearing and opening up the permit. I would suggest not opening it up. I mean, I would suggest right. not opening, yeah. opening it up. Is a little. That's that's like. I almost feel like a shot across the bow before. No, no, no. I don't. I don't see the need to open it up. It's very unclear to me what our teeth are. The teeth are. They're not maintaining it. Yeah, it's good. What we, what we need to let them know is that there is a risk that it will be what can we do opened up. He's got what he wants already. Yeah, he does. He does. He's got his CBS. Right. Yeah, but he's not maintaining. He's not following the special. That's right. Program. But what? I think all we can do is. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. But let's get him in here to talk about it because. <laughs> That's a lawyer's thing. I mean, yeah, from yeah, his, uh, exactly. you know, yeah, still, I'll think of one. my mind. We certainly were tough with Mr. Newman tonight, so. Yeah. 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 So what is your pleasure? Do you want to be on April 4th and the 11th, or how would you like to structure that? Well, I think you're going to have to have, you, I you are going to have to break up the presentation. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of articles. That's a lot. Um, to, Typically in town meeting, we split up the uh, redevelopment board articles right, right. for a presentation, mm -hmm. and anything we really aren't that attached to, we give to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I won't, I, we won't talk about specifics. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, town meetings are full contact sport when it comes I to zoning just, bylaws. Just say I've been cremated. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, you have. Yes. Uh, anyway, um, 
So, uh, so I, I think that's that's my only concern. It, it kind of depends if, I, if if we're not doing anything else on April fourth, then we can do that. And I, I think we need to meet the fourth and the eleventh. Twenty. We all have to be at town meeting anyway. The history there as we come in, we meet for forty five minutes and then continue over to town meeting. The twenty fifth is a meeting, but that's really just a perfunctory. Yeah. So I, I do think, given the fact that there will be at least, well, there will be a special permit hearing. And then there may be another contentious hearing on the Atwood House, plus putting these up. I think we do need to meet on, on both of those dates. Mm -hmm. That's reason you can't cancel the 11th. If, if and, and yeah, exactly. If we get through the 4th, then we can always cancel the 11th. Right. But plan to be here all of those nights. We're on March. March 21st. Just the 21st. So does the only one be in next month? Nope. Yeah. Okay. We've never been this early for ready for a hearing. Very nice. <laughs> Good job. Yes, absolutely. As it turns out, the hearing's very late, though. Because that is, that is what happened, too. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.